In this video, I want to talk about the top five plugins that I use on all of our websites. So we build the plugins that we use for the most part. Um, we don't really build plugins that are already built and work really, really good. There's no sense in it. So I wanna go over the top five plugins that we use on all of our websites and explain what each one of those plugins do and the reason why we use it, all right? So the number one plugin that we use is Yoast. Yoast is an SEO plugin that will help your website get ranked in the search engines if you follow the instructions that Yoast gives you. It gives you notifications, and even when you're writing content, it tells you how SEO friendly that content is. You put in a keyword and it'll tell you what percentage of SEO content that keyword ranks for. So Yoast is a really good plugin. It also does the sitemap for you, so you don't have to generate an XML sitemap. Yoast will take care of that for you. There's a free version of Yoast, which has you know several features, but then there's a paid premium version of Yoast, which has a lot more features and allows you to do a lot more. And I'll go into these each into their own video, uh, but today I wanted to just talk about the top five that we use, all right? So Yoast is also very search engine friendly for page speed. We don't use any plugins that will affect the loading time of the website. PageSpeed is an important factor of the search engines and the user experience. Now, we've been building websites that load fast for a long time, and now the search engines, Google and stuff like that, have now started picking up on PageSpeed and actually including that in their ranking algorithm for where your site ranks in the search engine. So each one of these plugins that I talk about today are will not affect your page speed. Some of them actually even help your page speed. But Yoast being the first one we're talking about does not affect your page speed at all. All right. The next one is Postman SMTP. Now your website is designed to send email from the PHP server, which doesn't work very well. The, if you go in and you, you make it where you can send an email when there's a new user created, you know, um, more than likely if you haven't set up an SMTP server, that new user is not going to get an email from your website because the server doesn't send out mail as well as an SMTP server. So with Postman SMTP, you can use, you know, services like G Suite, um, gmail.com, or, you know, Outlook. You can use the mail services to send mail through the SMTP server. And I've got a video on doing, you know, setting up DKIM and DMARC with G Suite, which is what we recommend for the most part for email. So we use G Suite for our clients and we set up their website with Postman SMTP configured with Gmail so that when an email is sent from the website, the recipient gets the email because all the pieces are correct, if that makes sense. So the Postman SMTP, again, does not affect the front end of the website, does not affect the loading times of the website. The Postman SMTP is very well built and does everything that we need it to do. So the third plugin that we use is a plugin called Chaos. It's a Google Analytics plugin. And I'll put the links to their um, to all these plugins to their plugin page and their main website. And Chaos plugin is a Google Analytics plugin that doesn't affect page speed. Now it's kind of scary to say that. Google provides Google Analytics, and Google Analytics affects page speed. Not by much, one or two points, but it's still, when you do a page speed check, you still get deemed for having Google Analytics on your site. And the reason that is, is because Analytics is 
controlled by a JavaScript. And if the JavaScript's not deferred, then you get dinged. If the JavaScript is not hosted in the same place that your other JavaScript is hosted at, you get dinged. And if it's not on a CDN, you get dinged. So Chaos plugin allows you to install Google Analytics and host your JavaScript, the analytics file, locally, or you can even host it in a CDN, which is what we do for all of our sites. So the Chaos plugin is a great plugin. All right. The fourth one that we're going to talk about is W3 Total Cache. I'm not a huge fan of caching plugins, especially when you're in the development stage because developing a site and the site being cached is can can be a major headache. So typically we build a site, once the site's up and running, then we use W3 Total Cache. And what caching does, if you're not familiar with it, is it it loads your site from the history of that you've already been to. I don't know how to explain that really well. It, it if, if you've already been to that site, it, it brings up that same page. Now, the caching will expire and the page will reload when there's new content, but the caching also saves for server um, speed and for server bandwidth. So caching your website makes it load faster, helps the your bandwidth for the server so that you're not paying more money for hosting if you're paying on a basis where the amount of data that's transferred uh, it increases the cost of the hosting. So the caching does, does that and it does it well. Um, you can go in and clear out the cache. Again, I can make a video on each one of these plugins specifically, but most of you probably know what a caching plugin does and W3 Total Cache is the one that we use. All right. So the, the last plugin I want to talk about is a new plugin that we just started using, and they're actually sponsoring this video. I typically don't do sponsored videos. I get a lot of requests for it. They'll send me the, their theme or their plugin and ask me to review it and for, for them to sponsor it. I won't do it even for free or for paid because typically the plugin is not built correctly in my mind. It affects page speed or it slows down the, the admin area of WordPress. Because for us, it's not only just the front end of the site that needs good page speed. It's also the admin, WordPress admin area that needs good page speed. You want that admin area, when you go in to click on a post or a page, you want it to be able to, you click on it and it's there. You can add and edit do whatever you need to do, and you're not having to wait for the loading of every page that you click. So some of the plugins, not any of these that we're talking about today, but some plugins affect the loading time of the WP admin area. So this one is by WP Vivid. It's backup and restore plugin. And I back up a lot of sites on a regular basis, too many really. And it's always a manual process to log into either log into the site via FTP or SFTP and download the files or zip it and download the files and then log into PHP My Admin and back up the database through PHP Admin. WP Vivid Backup and Restore gives you the ability to back it up with just the click of a button. It also gives you the ability to back up to a remote location like Amazon S3, Google Cloud, um, Microsoft's One Cloud, OneDrive, I'm not sure, whatever it's called. Um, and you can even do FTP or SFTP if you have a, another server that you want that file to go to. We use Dropbox um, and now I've set up all the sites to go through and just on a schedule go through and back up. And I've, I've set them to, uh, to back up on a daily basis. So then all I have to do is open up my Dropbox folder on my local machine and I can see all those backups that are there. So the Backup and Restore is a great plugin that we just started using and it's saved us so much time already. 
So those are my top five plugins that we use on every website. Let me know the plugins that you use, if they're different than the ones that we use and why you use those plugins. Um, and like this, if you like this video, click the like button and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.